Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are welcoming back our friend Dennis Kucinich, former standout member of the United States Congress and possibly future member of the United States Congress currently running for Congress in Ohio. Uh, Dennis is also blogging regularly on Substack. You can read his writings there. Uh, Dennis, welcome back to Talk World Radio. David, it's uh, great to join you and thank you for your ongoing commitment to a a peaceful and a sane world. (laughs) Well, I can't tell you how many times in recent years I've wished uh, that there were a Dennis Kucinich uh, or even half a Dennis Kucinich back in the United States Congress. There has been there have been times when something was needed and nobody was doing it. And I want to ask you about various of those. But I, I want to start with uh, what you've been writing about most recently, uh, efforts to make uh, selective service or draft registration for 18 and up males uh, automatic nationally. Um, what's your what's your concern there? Well, you know, right, right now, all 18 year olds are required uh, by law to register for selective service. Uh, and, if they're male. Uh, pardon? If they are male. Right. Right, if they're male. Uh, in the in the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, when it was in the Armed Forces Committee, a uh, Democratic member of that committee uh, submitted an amendment that was adopted by a voice vote, which uh, provided that uh, the registration for selective service would be automatic which uh, for all 18 to 26 year olds, uh, which means that anybody, uh, 18 to any male 18 to 26, uh, would automatically be thrown into this pool, that 16 million uh, young people. Uh, And with today's uh, databases and the government uh, working with the private sector, uh, having the ability to track anyone anywhere, uh, we create a whole new surveillance uh, for uh, essentially, uh, you know, military service. Anytime someone wants to just grab, reach out and grab somebody and call them up. Now, there's constitutional issues here, David. Uh, it's Fourth Amendment and Fifth Amendment issues with this automatic uh, registration. I mean, it's a, um, uh, it, it's a, it's a new uh, feature of the relationship between government and the individual. This whole idea about conscription uh, or even the setting up an infrastructure for uh, conscription uh, and uh, through automatic registration uh, really raises serious questions about the intentions of the government. Now, this this amendment passed the committee and it was included in the bill that passed the House of Representatives. It is now uh, this proposal is now before the Senate. Now, in the Senate. Uh, uh, companion committee, the Armed Services Committee in the Senate, the Senate extended a provision to include 18 to 26 year old women, which means uh, for the first time, uh, women would be subject to not only the draft, but also uh, with this uh, feature of automatic registration that came through the House, uh, you'd have 16 uh, million American young males and 16 million American young females, a total of uh, 32 million Americans, subject to uh, automatic registration and selective service. Now, with the United States uh, being involved in forever wars, uh, this uh, and, and with the budget of the United States increasingly dedicated to, to wars, with the uh, uh, people enlisting uh, enlistment in the armed services going down. Matter of fact, I think it, it, there's one study that said enlistment is down by 41% since 1987. The all volunteer army is shifting. Right now, the administration is uh, uh, is uh, busy uh, involved in, in, in hiring private contractors, the Blackwaters of the world, or whatever they call themselves now. 
uh, to go ahead and uh, uh, and fill uh, the military needs for wars that we don't need to be involved in. So this is a, you know, I called the public's attention to this because this is a, um, a, a an evolving development in the militarization of our nation. And, uh, and for people who say, well, it does, it's no big deal. You just get automatically registered. You have to register now. Oh, it is a big deal because uh, with, again, today's databases, it actually, uh, uh, it actually opens wide the aperture of a surveillance society. Well, I agree with you that it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal because there are reasons they might want to have an actual draft. But uh, I think, and it may be harder to avoid them by changing where you live and not reporting your change of address. They may be following you night and day. But but I do think we should be clear, this is not a draft. This is draft registration. And I think about two thirds of states already have it automatic, whereas only about a half of states have automatic voter registration, tells you something about priorities in this country. Uh, and, and I don't think Congress is making any moves to universalize voter registration being automatic, just draft <laughs> registration. Um, but I think this is just making national uh, what the majority of states already do they you you get a driver's license they register you for the draft if you're a male but what i find very interesting is that they've the congress and the courts have long since concluded that to be constitutional they have to either add women or or drop out men they can't have draft registration just for men they have to either stop it <laughs> or add women and yet they don't they they just proceed uh in what they view as the unconstitutional practice of of just registering men. Uh, obviously, you and I disagree with the good liberals in the in the US Senate on which solution would be better. Well, the the you know, from the foundation of the country, uh, this whole idea about uh, conscription is something that uh, was frowned upon by the founders. and uh, and while uh, it is, registration and not a draft, you can't have a draft unless you set up the infrastructure. And, and with the in infrastructure being, as you call it, uh, you know, universalized, it changes, it changes everything. And with the government then setting up through selective service uh, and, and through the ability to track people that's unparalleled, there, there is no, um, th there's no way to effectively protest this uh, this movement. And the best protest right now is legislatively through this, uh, uh, through these automatic registration requirement, this automatic registration requirement not even being in the bill. And it's just the timing of it, David. And it's the, uh, it's the, um, uh, it's this government's unquenchable thirst for, for more war that concerns me. Because uh, people would say, well, you know, again, it's no big deal. But it is because the last time we had automatic, universal automatic registration for a draft was, I think, in 1940. No, excuse me. It was during the Vietnam War. Um, and, uh, you know, about a third of the people who were drafted then uh, ended up uh, uh, not, not ever not being able to go home, you know, they were killed. Indeed, and they killed a lot more people uh, in Vietnam. Uh, Dennis Kucinich, one of the things that has troubled me the most is the incredible ongoing increase in military spending, uh, which we have seen just relentless on a steady upward climb through administrations as parties change. It doesn't seem to make the slightest difference. Um, every year, President Biden proposes a big increase and Congress adds another big increase on top of that. But what I was startled by was a couple of years ago, uh, the Democrats in the House were upset about something that was in the bill, which they called the Mansion Dirty Oil Deal. And they said, no, we're gonna vote no. 
we're even going to vote no on the rules vote to bring the thing to the floor because we might actually win there uh, unless this dirty oil deal is taken out. And it worked. And they got the thing taken out. And then they passed the bill with the dramatic increase in money for mass murder that they had no qualms about. But would it be possible if you were in Congress, maybe, to organize maybe three or four of these people who claim to be against increases in military spending to actually vote no unless the military spending is decreased? It's never happened. Is it possible? Well, uh, it should be possible. Uh, when you see that there's a couple of factors here. One is that uh, military spending is taking a uh, increasingly larger percent of the discretionary budget. Uh, when you uh, couple it with the uh, with the intelligence budget, which is essentially militarized as well, we're over a trillion dollars. I mean, the bill in the Senate is over nine hundred billion. But we're way over a trillion dollars a year. Uh, and you look at it from the discretionary budget, it's way over 50 percent. And, and what that what that means is that we have a, a, a militarization of the country going on. You, you can't be spending that kind of money and and have it not affect the consciousness of the nation. And so we we are now at a point where. Uh, when you put that together with the forever wars, America is uh, uh, essentially a military machine in, in the form of a uh, uh, a republic, and it has, um, uh, you know, notwithstanding the admonition of I think it was John Adams, been roaming the world looking for dragons to slay, and more than that, uh, looking for resources to grab. This le Leviathan, which has become our nation, uh, is uh, was never intended to be this way, and yet uh, we we are now at a point where it is uh, pervasive in all areas of our lives, and uh, it, it's not the uh, it's it's not the country that we um, envisioned uh, in our youth, and it. Um, and we're seeing it now through a glass darkly. But what can be done by Congress members? I know what I can do. I'm not in Congress. I'm not trying to get in Congress. I can yell and scream and educate people about it. But what can Congress members do? Because the, the good ones, the ones that I think, meanwhile, have this bill called People Over the Pentagon, and they try to get it in as an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Acts and fail, but it would cut 10%. But they've been introducing this thing year after year while the while the military spending has soared 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. Uh, and were they to actually pass it someday, you could just increase the military spending by 10 percent. And then this this extra bill would cut that 10 percent and you'd be nowhere. And yet this is all they do. They won't say I'm going to vote no and try to get my colleagues to vote no on the actual military spending bill. And I'm trying to understand why not. And I'm trying to ask you if you would ever do such a thing. Well, you know, I, I, I uh, perhaps in my first year in Congress, in, my, in the first vote that came up, I may have voted for a, um, uh, a defense authorization or military spending. Uh, once I rather quickly learned what the game was there, I didn't vote for another one, David, not a one, all the way through to the time that I completed my service in the House 16 years later. And so uh, members of Congress can, uh, you know, first of all, starts in committee. Uh, you can say uh, no, you can vote against the bill. That's one choice that you have. You can offer amendments to strip money from a bill. You can, um, offer amendments to transfer funds at some point. But here's here's what happened. Every congressional district has defense contractors. And those defense contractors regularly go to visit members of Congress with, uh, with the story of how many jobs are created and the money that goes into the district. So that has an impact uh, often with individual members 
uh, the, um, uh, you know, I was on a government oversight committee and we would get regular reports from the inspector, uh, inspector general when I first started in Congress, and this is what got me to look at, uh, at this defense budget in a way that I maybe hadn't before I was in Congress. Uh, the first meeting that I was at was a presentation by the Inspector General for the Department of Defense. And this report that was presented said that the Department of Defense, which was in 1997, had over $1 trillion worth of accounts it could not reconcile that the department had over 1,000 different accounting systems. The whole thing is set up so people don't know what's going on. The whole thing is set up to be able to hide money, to be able to uh, 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 eliminate any accountability. And once you have a massive budget set up, it's set up so the programs keep going, which is why it keeps expanding. The whole logic of it is moving America in a direction of a, of a wholly militarized society crowding out all kinds of domestic uh, priorities. This is, a, this is a major problem for who we are as a nation. And, uh, you know, again, it's the reason why, as I saw it on a continual basis, the reason why I could never vote for these budgets. There's another thing, too. If, if you look at uh, any of the reports that have been done on, on the contracting for uh, uh, the Pentagon, the taxpayers are getting absolutely hosed. There's, there's, there's cost run-ups by a factor of sometimes 20 times. Uh, the taxpayers are paying for things that uh, uh, you're getting gouged is what it amounts to. And, you know, this goes way beyond the days uh, uh, of, you know, yesteryear when people talked about, a, you know, $400 hammers. You know, right now, it's the taxpayers are getting hammered with, uh, uh, with, in, with these contracts that are going out and there is no oversight. This is the thing that, uh, uh, yeah. that needs to be understood. So these, th these big military contractors are free to charge the government whatever they want, and they do. And, and if you look at the, uh, at the defense stocks, you look at, uh, at, at uh, Northrop Grumman, at, at um, uh, divisions of Boeing, you look, you go across the board at all the defense stocks, they're all up, 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 okay? They're, they're, they're swimming in money. And that's, uh, and, and so much of it is just, it's just being stolen from the people. I mean, that's, an, that's another dimension of this, that, that the, the corruption that takes place when there's these great amounts of money that are being uh, spent through military contracts. And in addition to that, it's the corruption that takes place when you send billions of dollars to a, a country like Ukraine and, uh, and money's just being stolen. I mean, it's what happened in Iraq. It happens everywhere. We put tons of money out. Uh, you, you know, this um, uh, Smedley Butler famously quoted, war's a racket. It, it's a big money racket, absolutely. It may be the biggest. I, I, I think, uh, Congressman Kucinich, that you would still be in Congress. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if they hadn't, if Ohio hadn't redistricted the districts uh, and if a lot of this money hadn't flown to to uh, the coffers of your opponent. Uh, and you may have noticed in recent days the most expensive primary in U.S. history, uh, Congressman Bowman uh, versus APAC, uh, and APAC won. Uh, what do we, how do you compete in this kind of a system? Well, it's not easy. I mean, I've asked people to go to Kucinich.com to make their humble contributions, and we have had that by the thousands, and that's one way to compete. But I think in a Bowman race, I've read that is you know a, t a total of maybe twenty you know over twenty million dollars was spent, uh, extraordinary amount of money in a congressional race. Let's let's talk about the uh, the elephant in the room here. Uh, APEC has increasingly inserted itself in Democratic primaries, and has been quite successful in electing members in electing to Congress or in keeping in Congress individuals who vote down the line with uh, with Israel. 
Now, this isn't a matter whether you like Israel or not. This is a matter whether you love America, <laughs> because the interests of Israel are not identical with the interests of the United States. It's an entirely different country with an entirely different structure. And it, we act, act as though uh, uh, Israel is us. No, it's not. And so it is, it's extraordinary that APAC is permitted to be able to affect the outcome of congressional races in an open way when there is no question that their dedication right now is to helping to keep a war going, uh, a, a genocide going against the people of Gaza. And there are uh, uh, acolytes of, of APAC who are cheerleading, are cheerleading that ethnic cleansing. And, and when you realize how many people are being killed, it's way beyond the number of, you know, almost 38,000 is being cited. You could you'd probably say it's short by, by a factor of eight to 10 uh, because people aren't accounted for, they're just buried under the rubble. How in the world, in this day and age, can anyone with a conscience or a heart look at this and not be repulsed and not look at those who are actually buying the Congress's silence or complicity uh, and, and not have a, a measure of accountability? How can this be permitted? The, the, this is a, another country taking over the United States. This is clearly the tail wagging the dog. And yet we are expected to, this is normal? No, it's not. Uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be different if there wasn't this, you know, everybody has a chance to advocate for whatever interest, uh, Citizens United changed the whole ball game, but there, there is, there's a line that's always been drawn about having foreign interests in, you know, interfere in US elections. <clears throat> Famously, Donald Trump was accused of, of uh, being a tool of Russia, which was, you know, a, a lie, you know, just a lie. And yet, Israel's be, Israel uh, through APAC is manipulating, or Israel's directly manipulating through Netanyahu right now, the White House by claiming that it's not getting enough of those arms. They're not coming quicker, so they can use them against uh, the Gazans. And then you have APAC raising the stakes in every single congressional election, you either fall in line or we're gonna put millions of dollars against you. Yeah. This is, a, this is a national scandal of the highest magnitude where the Congress is bought and sold for by a foreign interest. I mean, what in the world's going on here? And, and the individuals who then uh, remain in the Congress as a result of this are not dedicated to the United States of America as a first uh, cause cannot separate the interest of Israel from the United States of America. Uh, they're, they're simply reduced to a position of hirelings, and and this is a this is a a constitutional uh, issue that needs to be dealt with by stopping any foreign interest at all, uh, directly or indirectly, from interfering in the U.S. electoral process. Um, Dennis, I, I remember that when you were in the Congress, you made great efforts to hold accountable top officials, Bush and Cheney and gang, uh, who were guilty of the most horrendous crimes. Uh, and I think that uh, the Democratic Party, largely the so-called leadership, wouldn't get involved because they were complicit in the same crimes. Uh, and the result was that President Obama and President Trump and President Biden felt free to commit similar outrages. Uh, and impeachment became something that would be used only for sex or for something partisan that the other party could say they weren't part of. Um, and, and I remember Dick Cheney and others just openly defying congressional subpoenas and here we now see Steve Bannon getting locked up for that, which is wonderful. But 
why is it only once in a while that you that you can't defy congressional subpoenas? Um, we have we have just a few minutes left. What has happened to congressional power and accountability for for the White House? It's gone out the window. The idea of checks and balances is theoretical. It's not really happening. Congress is not functioning as a um, uh, as a, a separate and equal branch of of government. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, and, and this is to the detriment, the manifest detriment of the people of the United States. Uh, the, um, the, the war making power, which is the Constitution and Article 1, Section 8 vests in the Congress, has been hijacked by one administration after another. And Congress just stands back, keeps giving money, and, uh, uh, and doesn't really uh, enter into the question of why. How does this happen without the representatives of the people signing off? That's what the founders asked for. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm running now, David, because, you know, I, I'm, and I'm running as an independent. That needs to be made clear. I, I, I decided this polarization that's going on uh, between the parties, you know, whether it's, it's dramatic and posed or real, that needs to be set aside. I'm willing to go back to help people talk to one another again. To, help people focus on the needs of the American people to help this country move away from the disaster it's moving towards right now and with a potential nuclear war with Russia, with widened war in the Middle East, and with a uh, confrontation with China over Taiwan. Uh, you know, I've always represented a voice, not ideological, but committed to peace because, you know, war I've seen, you know, since, since, uh, Korea has been based on so many uh, deceptions and lies, uh, and the American people have repeatedly been the losers, as well as millions of people around the world who were killed in wars that never needed to happen. So, you know, people who need information about uh, my campaign, who want to help in any way, can go to Kucinich.com. Uh, I, you know, I'm taking the banner and making another, another charge forward here on behalf of a, of a world that we know can exist, on behalf of a higher vision for the America that can be, on behalf of priorities that go beyond war, that go to, to education and healthcare and, and, and jobs and, 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 a, and, and a cleaner environment and on and on and on. But we can't have that as long as we uh, think that the mission of our country is to go blow up the world. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't be more hopeful that you return to Congress uh, and talk this way uh, in the House of Representatives. Um, we, we need you there, Dennis Kucinich. I, I recommend people uh, go online to Dennis's campaign website and to his Substack uh, website and follow his work and support what he's doing. Dennis, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Uh, David, thank you, and thank you for the work that you're doing, and 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 continually, uh, and and intellectually, and emotionally, and spiritually raising these questions about why, why in the world are, is America moving forward with continuous wars, and we're we're losing our way as a nation, and and people like you help to keep focused on on the direction that needs to be taken. So thank you. Thank you. Onward. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.